when you put in, when you type that in, it should prompt you and say, do you want to add sliders? Do you see that? And it gives you some buttons there. Are you up to there yet? Not up to there yet. That's okay, when you get there. That's why I have these uh, one, two, three sliders down here that allow me to vary the values of A, B, and C, okay? So, I've got my coefficients there. You can see this is the familiar co um, quadratic I've been giving you over and over again, right? This is x squared plus 5x plus 6, right? Are you sick of this quadratic yet? Okay. Now, there are our two roots, negative 2, negative 3, just as you expected, okay? Now, here's what's really interesting. Um, I've, got, I've got these three values, and the reason I put them on sliders is precisely so I can muck around with them, okay? Now, we're going to muck around with them in a specific order. What will happen when we change C? Now, you know what C is from the general form. What does C tell us about the quadratic? Y intercept. It tells us the y intercept. So if I change this value up and down, it should change this value up and down. Do you agree? So it should slide up and down. That's no big deal. Let's see what happens. C, there we go. Up, sorry, down, up. Sure, that's exactly what you expected. That's no surprises there. Okay. Ah, now here's a really important moment. Take it for what it's worth. A and B, I am also going to modify, but they are not nearly as obvious. What do you expect will happen? Do B first. As I change B up and down. You ever think about it for a second? Make a prediction, maybe jot it down, right? What would you expect is going to happen to the shape of it? The position of it? Hmm. You've had a second to think. Who'd like to venture forward? And by the way, total guesses, unless you've done this before, right? Rain, I think you had your hand up first. Tell us just one thing that you expect. Uh, would it move left and right? Okay, we're thinking there might be some horizontal movement, okay? I think there will be some horizontal movement. Part of the reason why is because when we factorize, right, when we factorize, the value of this number changes what your factorization will be. It changes these numbers, right? And when you change these numbers, you go left and right. So I think that's good. But I think there's going to be more. Are there any other suggestions for changes? So some of the roots will change? Some of the roots will change? Well, there's only, there's two, yeah, right? Yeah, so if you change one of the roots, and because if the B is involved in alpha plus beta. Exactly so right. That means Very good. If, if beta changes, then like alpha gets. Okay, good. All right, now let me just write this back down, right? Because it's crucial. This is the way I'm showing you this. Okay, you're exactly right. That once you change one of the roots, you necessarily are changing the other one. Okay, because these two are well. There's the B that I'm changing, right? So you'd expect they to be together. Let me ask you this question. I'll phrase it a different way. I asked you what would change. Okay, so we said some horizontal movement roots. What's going to stay the same? Is there anything that's going to stay the same? The one the one Ah, good. So you notice. If I muck around with this, I go up and down, but if I lock it in position, it's 5.1 at the moment, it should stay put. That point should stay put, shouldn't go anywhere, right? Is there anything else that you would expect that would stay the same? It would still be a parabola. I should hope so, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah right? The steepness of the curve would stay the same, so ah. the gradient. So, so when you compare like this guy with this guy, Right? Like you can mentally picture that. Okay, I'm just getting steeper here, thinner, if you like, right? But I'm not changing that number. I'm leaving it at one. So I'm gonna expect, see how steep it is at the moment. I'm gonna sort of expect that that would stay put. Okay. Alright, ready? I'm gonna change. Oh, one more wrap. Uh, okay, alright, let's give this a go, shall we? And we'll see what happens to Concavity. Remember what you predicted, what was gonna change, what was going to stay the same. Zoom out just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh, Wait, what? <laughs> I'm just going to hit play because I'm lazy. Okay. What's going on? It's going back and forth. What did you tell me would stay the same? Y you told me the Y intercept would stay the same. Bingo. Right there. Okay. You also told me that its steepness would stay the same. So it's just kind of shifting That's back right. and forth and moving around. I'll show you where it's moving around. Uh, it's moving around, I think it's this one. There we go. The vertex of the parabola is moving on a parabola. Can you see it slide up and down? What's the equation of the other parabola? 
Um, wait, which parabola? Oh, it's there. It's on the mic down there. Now, I will let you have a think as to why you'll notice there's a conspicuous absence from this. There's no b, or rather, there's a value of b that is zero, zero, zero. right? Why would that be? I'll just, just let you have a think about it. Okay, I'm just more interested in raising questions right now. Okay, last little bit here. Let's let's stop spinning that out. Okay, so I'll stick it back a little. Okay, now you might be a little more informed. That'll do about what will happen if I change a. You're already expecting something, right? You're expecting something. So steepness will change. Good. Okay, what's going to stay the same? Why is it? Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Um, it's a concave up, a happy parabola, right? Because A is positive right now. Okay. What do you expect will happen as A changes? Well, I think you can imagine what happens is it gets steeper. What happens is it's going to change this way? Because at some point, at some point, it's going to have to turn into concave yeah, down. Down. down, isn't it? It's going to have to turn from that. Ah, yeah, because when is it going? To, it's going to flatten out. When's it going to flatten? Zero. zero. When a is equal to zero, because yeah. you'll just get this, yeah. right? Can okay, you ready? Let's hit play. Okay. Now, what's it doing? It's getting steeper. It's getting steeper, but then it's going to come back. Watch it. Watch it carefully. Whoa! <laughs> Did you catch it? Let me slow it down. I'll slow it down for you. Uh, oh wait, I want to Okay, so you can see I've slowed it down a fair bit, a third speed almost. Okay, so it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. The y-intercept is the same; it's still the same. Okay, but now it's coming back down. As it approaches zero, watch what happens. Okay, here it comes down. Now it flattens out because it has to turn concave down. Right? Now, what's it moving around? Remember I showed you that parabola before that it was sliding around and around? Okay, well, here it is. There, let me, oh, I can't change the color. I'm just going to leave it red. There we go. Now, what's happening here? Speed it back up. Oh. Hmm. So why does it, like, go really quickly? Like, you know how it's... It goes slow and then suddenly. That's a great. That's a great question. I want you to think about that. There is. It seems to just like not go anywhere for ages, and then here, just like wee, very dramatic change. Why? There's a real answer to that question. There's a real numerical answer to that question. Okay. Now, let me pause because because while you're watching the animation, you're like, I am listening to nothing that you're saying right now. Okay. So let me bring it back down. Okay. There we go. Now. Here comes my real big question why I showed you all of this, okay? Um, I'm gonna take away these, okay? One of the great things, if you haven't discovered it about Desmos already, is that it'll just do, it doesn't just do graphs, it also does calculations. So I can calculate these guys, right? So I can put in minus B on A. And it spits out a number, okay? Let me just go back to my favorite parabola, x squared plus five x. Six. Oops. Okay, there you go. Right. The sum of the roots. It's negative five. Does that makes sense, doesn't it? Because so you got negative two, negative three. You add them. No big deal. Okay. I can also calculate the product of roots. Let's put them in here. C on A. Okay. So it's six because negative two times negative three equals positive six. No problems, right? Okay. Now. Watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to use C to do it. I'm just going to slide it straight up. Okay? If I just go a teeny little bit. Hmm. Now, tell me, That's where are the roots? They don't exist. They don't exist on this graph, do they? Absolutely right. And yet, according to this, my roots that don't exist they still add up to negative 5. And apparently now, they multiply to 7.6. These roots that, well, from this guy, let's put him in, b squared minus 4ac. It's negative, what does that mean? That's the discriminant, no real roots, no real roots, but there are two on 
real roots, whatever they, they are, wherever they are. And you can still add them, and you can still multiply them, and you get these numbers, okay? Now, we're going to dig further into this. Can, have I convinced you yet that despite it being a simple thing, you can think deeply about it, and the rabbit hole goes way, way down, okay? So this is a bit of a teaser, but it begs the question now. Like, I know how to calculate these, but what do they even mean? 